Well, this is kind of overwhelming, right? We're trying to keep up. I'm not sure anymore it's that important to keep up. More about that later. So let's think about this for a second. You've got, because of everything I've just talked about, our children really do deserve our empathy. It, they really deserve us rewinding to our own middle school years and junior high years. I often tell people there's not enough money on the planet to make me do junior high again. I went to a junior high, oddly enough, in Arkansas. So this is a difficult time. And I talked about how in the worst case scenarios, these things can add to some really terrible outcomes. And I'm just gonna ask for your indulgence. I've been troubled by this and I'm taking opportunities to talk to people about it. And it's unfortunately not unrelated to tonight's topic, relationships and social media. These are the suicide rates in teenagers since 1981. And if you've been around here very long, you may have heard me say a few years ago, suicide rates actually went down in the 90s. That's true. Look at what's been happening since about 2008. After, I'm sorry, after a long decline, long period of decline, about 10 years of decline, suicide rates have been climbing precipitously for the last 10 years. Now, or 12 years. Now let me ask you, what happened in the last 12 years to teenagers? That's the period of time they started toting around smartphones and having social media accounts. I do not believe that is the cause of the rise in suicide rates, but I'll bet you it's in the mix. So not to be Dr. Downer, although that's my job, this can be quite serious, you know, and, I, and maybe I'm stating something obvious. Most experts think that this phenomenon is at least somewhat related to social media and youth. We already have plenty of data that tell us that the longer any of us spend on social media, the sadder we are and the more disconnected we feel. Isn't that ironic? The more we connect, the less we're connected. It's that kind of weird thing. Look at this. Suicide rates in 15 to 19 year olds in the last 10 years. And by the way, 2017 is the last year we have the data, right? It takes a while for the feds to compile it. Look at those numbers. And those of you who know me a little bit know that I spent 12 years here mostly going around saying, don't panic, what you're hearing about is wrong, everybody's fine. I'm making a parody of what I used to say. Now I consider this a national emergency, which if there wasn't so much competition for our leading national emergency, this would be a much bigger, if we were taking this as seriously as we should, there would be a Manhattan Project style thing going on someplace trying to figure out what in the world is going on and what can we do about it. So this is potentially grim business, right? I've been interested lately in the idea, kind of dovetails into something else Dickie said, that adult use of social media may be now a bigger problem for youth than their own use of social media. And here's what I mean by that. First of all, most of the problems with kids' behavior online is also a problem of adults' behavior. Adults gossip about people online. Adults uh, share ugly rumors that are unsubstantiated. Adults, do, adults spend too much time in screens, uh, on <laughs> screens and neglect other things that could be useful. So we're spending too much time, most of us, many of us, on social media. And, and there's all kinds, we already now have several studies where they do things like observe young parents in parks with young kids. And parents are tracking their iPhones and not interacting with their children at the park. That's, you know, so this is a sort of a national addictive process that's grabbed all of us. It's a serious business. And it also goes to the whole question Dickie raised about what it is we're modeling, what it is we're showing our kids. I'm not fussing at you. I struggle, as a grandparent now, I struggle with this all the time. I struggle with it. I struggle with my own screen time all the time. Because so many things I do are related to, you know, screens and writing and strange things. Anyway, another way, this is just, I'm just you know, this is just a big pet peeve of mine. When a, children get in trouble and... They, they do boneheaded things. Teenagers do boneheaded things. That's what they're prone to do. And very, start paying attention to how often 
when teenagers are in the news for something they did, that there will be adults on social media calling for the crucifixion of those children by name. Now, I'll give you a quick example. You remember from about two years ago, the national news story on everything about the girl, two girl, to some kids playing on a bridge over a river, and a girl pushed her best friend into the river. The kids were jumping. Her best friend was scared and reluctant to jump, and her friend pushed her, and she was injured when she hit the, wa when she hit the water. I think I just dropped a shit word here. I'm sorry. Um, sorry. Could have been worse. Sorry. Sorry. I'm, off the, I'm mostly off the payroll. There's a net perfectly good editor there. So she pushes this girl off, and uh, I, then she went in front of a judge at some point. It's all over the news. Goes in front of the judge. Judge gives her probation. People, adults on social media were saying she should be in prison. Adults on social media were saying she should be charged with murder. Now, let's think about what happened. An impulsive teenager, teenagers are prone to be impulsive, right? Does anybody believe that the three minutes before that she thought, I'm going to push her into the river and injure her, my best friend? She made a cognitive error. The error was kids have been jumping into the river and they were doing fine. What she missed is if you push somebody, they're not ready. They're, it's an uncontrolled fall, and so the girl got injured. And adults were calling for her to go to prison for murder. And, and start watching for how many times children named in the media are being torn apart by people that live in this town and a couple towns over and a couple towns after that. I challenge you about this to think about it. And the other thing is we pass on all kinds of rumors, and we usually do it because we say we're afraid, we think our neighbors need to know, but a lot of times we're passing on rumors about things we know nothing about. <laughs> That's what the nature of a rumor. So again, I don't, I'm not fussing. I'm, I'm going to say this again. All of these things I struggle with as a citizen. Right? And the last thing is we sort of panic and about the latest crazy thing kids are supposed to be doing. Remember this one about six months ago? What was this, the Momo Challenge, right? All over the news. In 36-hour period, every major news outlet and all the local stations had stories about how this image was showing up on Facebook and somehow it's precipitating kids to die by suicide. That was the first 36 hours. Today Show, NBC Nightly News, CNN, all the local stations. And I wish I had more time to talk about the local coverage of this, but I don't. The next 36 hours is everybody's running stories about how it was a hoax, right? Everybody bought it. It was, you're talking about the ultimate nothing burger, not a single documented case of anybody being heard about this. So we're buying into all this stuff without critically thinking.